In this movie, you'll learn how to use Tinkerplot's features to make group comparisons. We'll be looking at occupational data from 1985. We have information from 534 people, including their gender, education, and hourly wage. Let's look at wage, how much people make per hour. With wage selected, Drag an icon until the cases are fully separated. Now, each case appears over their exact values on the wage axis. Here's someone who's making $16.26 an hour, is a male, and 32 years old. When we stack them up, we see that the distribution of wage is very skewed. There are a lot of people on the lower end earning between $3 and $10 per hour, with fewer and fewer people as we move to the right. Recall that these data are from 1985. The minimum wage then was $3.50 an hour, which explains the pile of data here. Let's see whether people in unions tend to make more money than people not in unions. Select the attribute Union and make two groups by pulling up. Some people might conclude from this graph that the non-union workers make more. Note that the highest wage here belongs to a non-union worker. And if we look at those who make above $15 an hour, many more of them are non-union workers. Dividers are handy for comparing groups in this way. When we click on this button, we get two dividers. If we now turn on counts, we can see the number of cases in each section. Let's move the right-hand dividers to the end of the data. If we look at those who earn more than $15 per hour, we see that 50 of them are non-union workers compared to 15 union workers. Some might conclude from this that non-union workers earn more. There's a problem with this argument, however. In this collection, there are many more non-union workers overall. We can use this button to display percents, which take into account the different sizes of the groups. The percentages tell a different story. The union group has a higher percentage than the non-union group above $15 per hour. Another way to compare groups is to see where they cluster. We might say that the bulk of the non-union group is between about $3 per hour and about $10 per hour. For the union group, we might locate the center clump between, say, $7 and $14 per hour. Note that the center clump of the union group is further to the right than the non-union group. This suggests that the union wages tend to be higher. We can compare the medians of the two groups by clicking the median button. And we can display the values of the median right on the plot. The median for union workers is about $3 more than the non-union workers. Another useful tool for comparing groups is the hat plot. Let's make the plot icon smaller so we can better see the hats. Notice that the crowns of these hat plots are located roughly where we located the center clump using the dividers. The brims of the hats extend out to the range of the data. Right now, the crown edges are set to contain about the middle 50% of each group. You can adjust these edges by dragging them or change the type of hat. So it appears that union workers make more on average than non-union workers, but we should be careful how we interpret this difference. First, notice how the union wages are distributed, fairly symmetrically. The non-union wages, however, are bunched up against this left wall, the minimum wage. This difference in shapes is as important to consider as the difference in centers. Second, the difference in wages might also be due to education, 
occupation, or experience? We'll leave it up to you to explore these questions.